The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and you have markets in positive territory to kick things off right now. You have the S&Ps up by about 21 points right now, trading at 43.78. NASDAQ 100, we catch a bid up by 47 points. That's about a third of a percent in the positive, trading at 15,167. The Dow nearing 200 points in the positive this morning. We just got earnings from Charles Schwab. We'll jump over to them in a moment. We get earnings this week. You're talking about Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, finishing up some of the banks. They're out with their numbers tomorrow morning. We'll go over some of the other companies, Netflix, Tesla, their numbers this week as well as we get into the deep, uh, really kicking things off for earnings season. So you get the Dow right now up by six tenths percent. You have the Russell up by eight tenths percent. The Russell been particularly volatile. You check it out on Thursday up to 1800. We're down to 1724 this morning. We're up a bit off of Friday's lows at 1744. Crude, how about it? We just got an 88 handle on the price of crude. We were at $82 on Thursday. The price of the pump coming down the lowest in like three months or something like that, at least I saw. So if you haven't filled up that gas tank, maybe go fill it up. As the prices of the pump, gasoline coming down, gold pulling back a bit from some of those highs of Friday up to 1946, quite the acceleration for gold. This morning, we're giving back $10 at 1931. Volatility persisting on notes and bonds. I mean, you check out the action, right? Friday, we were up to 108. This morning, we were back down to 107.08. Right now, we're negative by 12 ticks. And let's see where we are in terms of the yield on the 10-year. 4.7, we'll call it. 4.69 exactly. 4.7, we'll call it. On the 10-year, approaching 4.7. We're at 107.12. Well, off the lows of 106 here, even putting it on a 20-day. There's your low. You're going back already to when 12 days ago we made that low in price. That was the high in yield. But boy, where are we in this channel? We've talked about this channel on this program before. You put this thing on a daily. That channel's going all the way back to the highs of May 4th when this thing really started trading lower. And all we've really been doing is bumping up a bit against the upper boundary line of that channel line. And listen, you could make the case, okay, as it goes, that this channel line might be a little bit higher. Maybe. Where's it rest? Uh, nonetheless, you see the action right now. We're negative by 12 ticks. You have yields higher. The 10-year right now up by six basis points. So you're up uh, from what? You start the session at 4.63. We're approaching almost 4.7%. So higher yields persisting right now, and you jump over to the dollar as we kick things off. DXY, back to a short-term chart on a 10-minute basis. Dollar pairing things a bit. And it's interesting how this is reacting, right? So what do you have going on right now? You actually have yields going up. You have dollar weakness. And you have market strength. Yeah, that's correct. I had to recalibrate my brain. Uh, not usually how the situation is usually working out, right? But boy, the dollar yet yeah, last week. There's your 20 day. And that acceleration we got on Thursday from 105.60, we really bounced, almost got to 106.80, and we're backing off a bit on the dollar at 106.41. All right, I mentioned Charles Schwab just jumping over. They have their numbers out this morning. Basically unchanged, up a bit, out with their numbers. Not sure what the, uh, what the numbers actually are just before the program, but I was jumping around putting this thing on a five-minute chart. You see the volatility on their numbers. You trade lower, you trade higher. We're up by about 20 pennies, positive with the market so far this morning. Okay, jumping over to some of the headlines we're going to kick it off with, Rite Aid. Filing for bankruptcy as debt load and the opioid risk rise. They have um, they have a deal to sell their pharmacy benefit man manager, Elixir, Elixir, Elixir. And they filed for Chapter 11 in New Jersey. They have a new CEO in there. I mean, nonetheless, you take a look at this chart, right? The company began in 1962. Single drug score, drugs Drugstore Scranton, Pennsylvania. Scranton, Pennsylvania. That's where the office is, right? Scranton. Uh, 
45,000 people. That's a bummer. Across 2,000 locations. Yeah, and it seems like that was a good business. They probably got in in 2015, the pharmacy benefit manager business, but that wasn't going to save them. Yeah, debt swaps and pay downs. The reason why I bring it up in particular, right, you have to have the conversation rising yields, rising cost of debt. So they have some financing to go through that Chapter 11 process as they try and achieve all the value they can. And they're paying 575 med impact for that uh, benefit manager, plus assuming some liabilities. Nonetheless, you take a look at this chart, right? RAD is their symbol. So what, you're actually positive by a few pennies right now at 68 to 70 bucks. I'm not sure how that works when you do declare bankruptcy. Does that open? But check out the chart, right? And that's just going back a year. There's your five-year weekly, man. Up to 32.48, we've been chopping around a while. We're at 64 pennies right now. So what's interesting is this, uh, you know, companies like this, the poster boy for maybe just managing the debt load they had for a company that was going out of business without a business plan. But if yields persist where they are, I mean, look at the acceleration this thing just got to. Thought they had a lifeline, right? Something happened there. I remember some type of headlines. Over $3, no, nonetheless. that They are going BK, and it didn't take long after that lifeline. All right, what else we got pulled up this morning? Yeah, we'll talk a little bit of Netflix. So they have their earnings coming out this week. You jump over to Netflix, this piece from the journal talking about video games and how they're ripping a page from the Hollywood script. What are they doing? They're making video games that have to do with their own brands, etc., like Squid Game, etc., and maybe that's where they do it. Black Mirror, Extraction, um, it's Sherlock Holmes series, right? So over the next several months, subscribers are going to be able to play games on their mobile devices based on hits such as the Squid Game, um, the Supernatural Comedy Wednesday, that's the Addams Family, right? Have not watched that myself yet. And then you have Black Mirror, et cetera. Even as Netflix creates homegrown tile titles, it's going to continue to license the well-known games from Bloons TD6. I'm not familiar to Classic Solitaire. Used to play some of that when things first began. But video games, one of the pushes that they'll have to be accountable for. Now, um, Netflix games have been downloaded 70 million times globally as of September 20th, up from 30.4 million last September I mean, you need some big numbers to compete in that arena, man. They spent about a billion dollars on games so far. Probably not a lot of money in terms of what they're trying to reach. They're hiring game execs. Yeah, so we jump over to Netflix with the higher market this morning. Netflix shares backing off from that high of 485 when they were last reporting. Okay, you jump over to the Analyze tab, you jump over to the Earnings tab. They have their numbers Wednesday after the bell. So they're October 18th. Yeah, I believe they're after the bell. Netflix shares. You jump over Tesla. They're going to be on Wednesday as well. That'll be an interesting one. Tesla and Netflix. But you take a look at Netflix back from the Tesla. And boy, it's been quite a pullback. So what do we do? We drive from 701 down to 162. You back off to the 50%. This thing's showing no sign, man. Maybe we trade back down to that 300 area and test it. But there is no slowdown to negative prices right now for this equity. All right, folks, stay tuned. We'll be coming back. We got a lot to talk about. We'll talk about some of the companies with their numbers this week. We'll be back in three minutes. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Right now, we have the markets in positive territory. S&P is continuing, continuing to drift a little bit higher right now. You're trading at 43H82. That's pre-market session highs. You see the volatility. We're solid, what, 27, 28 points from where you were trading at the lows last night at about 43.55. All right, jumping around to what else I had pulled up here and talking a little bit of crypto. And it's going to be interesting to see what uh, Sam Bankman-Fried decides to do if he goes on to testify for himself and it seems like that probably is going to be the case in my estimate like i have any clue of what's going on uh but it is interesting in terms of you have multiple execs testifying against him and it seems like they weren't able to dent you have the testimony from excuse me his, his co-founder gary wang and then his former girlfriend caroline ellison and she was the Alameda Research CEO. And so they both testify. They really don't dent that. They're probably going to put him on the stand. And I would imagine from his bravado and the interviews that he was doing ahead of getting a good lawyer when this all was coming down, that I imagine he's going to get up on that stand. So that's going to be an interesting, tantalizing um, moment. And I'm sure prosecutors are salivating over getting to ask him many questions on the stand. You know, I was having this conversation with my dad the other day, even talking about it, right, and saying, you know, boy, it was a bad trade, okay? But, man, it went so much, you know, as we broke down and we were both talking about it, saying, as you go through it, though, it, it, it goes more than that, right? It's more than a bad trade, which, which happens, as in, you know, he uses their trading house, makes a bad trade, relies on customer funds to try and make that trading revenue back, that's one thing. I mean, this was a straight deal where he was just, I mean, that $35 million penthouse in the Bahamas, which I brought up prior, right? As the house was tumbling and as there was a bad trade and crypto was faltering, there was just money that was spent on lavish life cycles, um, lifestyles between the, the money for politics, the money for all of those. Um, so what it's worth, it goes beyond that. So I'm interested to see if this goes, uh, I, I would be trying to watch that testimony if I can. Um, and what they're arguing here, right, it's like, man, is that he hasn't been getting his full dose of Adderall in prison, and they have to make this decision right now about whether he can testify, and he's not on top of his game because he hasn't been adequately uh, medicated with his AD, um, for his ADHD and depression. 
Uh, yeah. So nonetheless, uh, there's going to be more testifying. And you're not going to find out until he goes on there until the very second. Why would they say it in any other case? But nonetheless, that march is on. All right. What do we talk about? Let's talk a little bit of yelling. She's talking about rates being longer, man. Um, yeah, and they're talking about politics in here. I was reading earlier talking about um, she also had remarks saying that rates are basically, you know, could be longer in terms of for higher. And to hear that coming out of a Biden administration official, boy, you should heed, heed those remarks, man, because they're always talking up their own book. And higher for longer is not the book that you want when you're usually president in terms of putting pressure on the economy. Uh, nonetheless, that one's talking more politics more than anything. Yeah, you know, I mean, how many articles? Um, that's the China one we're going to talk about. Yeah, this is the one that I was talking, reading as before I came on the program. This one out at like 7.15 this morning. And it's a tough deal, man. You know, um, a push by the U.S. and Egypt to open Gaza's border crossing with Egypt stumbled early this morning, delaying evacuations of Americans. You had dozens of trucks carrying international aid. It's just um, things are only going to get worse, man, and hopefully they can get everybody out. I think I saw a number in there, 30 Americans, <clears throat> 30 Americans uh, dead in that initial attack, I believe, in Israel crazy stuff that that on a geopolitical basis you hear terms thrown around uh in terms of escalation right so we'll see how that one plays out hopefully for the best man okay what else do we have pulled up here yeah let's talk a little bit of apple the iphone we got two china stories here uh number one when we'll go back to this one the u.s is going to tighten curb curbs on china's access to advanced chip tech you're damn right they are, right? That one is on, man. This race is on. <clears throat> and if you don't think the race is on for, you know, dominance when it comes to your defense department, your army, your techno technological dominance, you better believe that the race is on with China. And the things that AI is doing right now with computers, it would make sense that this is going to become a big AI arms race, right? Technology race, which it already is. Uh, you jump over to Apple's iPhone. Now they, different angle of what's going on in China, but a disappointing start in China. The, excuse me, the iPhone 15 selling worse in China than its predecessor in 2022, down almost 5% in comparison. You're not going to want to hear that, man. Excuse me, and that's over the first basically two and a half weeks, 17 days after the release. <clears throat> Yeah, the twin reports mark a potential blow to Apple at a time it's grappling with the weakest smartphone demand in a decade and a backlash from overheating models, right? You see that one coming out? I actually thought about upgrading. I think I'm on a 12 plus right now. This one is going back to when? October 4th, so about two weeks ago. And they literally have an overheating issue. Anyway, for what it's worth, not what you want to hear on these new phones where, I mean, imagine how marginal some of the tipping points are for people to buy a new phone. Right. I'm like, ah, I'm probably OK. I'm probably OK. Ah, maybe I'll spend a thousand dollars for a new phone that I might not need. Not going to do it if it might be overheating when my phone's really works really well right now. Uh, you jump over to Apple. They were down almost two percent on this news. Yeah. And look at that. They get it back. I mean, you get the market up 25 points right now. you got five minutes until the opening bell. Apple shares are down about a dollar. So what's that? Half a percent, six tenths percent in the red. You see the spike on that report coming out 6 a.m. this morning. And longer term picture for Apple, man, holding up relatively well, to put it lightly, right? You're talking about highs from the market. That's where Apple's sitting right now. Apple's sitting where the, where the S&P was at 4,800 for some context, right? We've had many other pullbacks, but yes, we're off the high of 198. But we're still, in, still sitting at where the market was all time highs, just for some context, man. Let's take a look. Uh, Apple, they bounced to the 382. This morning, it opened down about a dollar. You jump over to Microsoft shares right now. Yeah, they peak, make a all-time high of 366. You see where they are compared to the highs in the market. Microsoft going to be trading higher by about two dollars and forty cents in the pre-market. You jump over to Google shares; they're higher by about a dollar as well. Google not quite back up, but man, so much for all the top of talk of antitrust problems, right? All the talk of Google losing their monopoly, man. You were just charging back near all-time highs. We put it on the five-year weekly. You come into COVID for Google at 75. You're trading at 140. 
just off the highs, just remarkable. You're right at the 786 for Google. We jump over to Tesla shares. So Tesla's, Tesla, excuse me. Yeah, I think Tesla's got lower price, man. You know, you trade up to about 300 right on the dot, right? What'd you get to? 299.29 you got to the week of July 17th. For Tesla shares, you pull back a bit. But all the action is down here, man. And look at that on a volume basis, right? All the action down there. You break out of this channel line. You come back, you almost test it. Maybe you're coming back one more time. We'll take a look at Tesla and Netflix. We'll take a look at some of the other equities with their numbers this week when we get back. Stay tuned, folks. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got the S&P right now up by 22 points. That's positive by about half a percent. NASDAQ 100, you're positive by 52 points or about a third of a percent in the positive. Dow up about seven tenths percent, trading up 215 points in the Russell, up 1.1 percent right now. So jumping back, we were talking a little bit of China. 
right, we're talking Apple. Let's jump to Apple, see how they're trading this morning. As the reports are out that the iPhone sales down about 5% in China, Apple off 1.1%. Be careful today, folks. We've got a lot of negative headlines right now in this market. We're coming into Tesla and Netflix earnings this week, among many others. We're going to go over the companies that are reporting this week right during this segment, so don't go away. Uh, but you have Apple shares off 1.1% on that story for China, right? And then we segue to some of the chip companies. Now, NVIDIA gets a little bit of a boost right now. We're up by half a percent. Let's see if it translates into, no, in, in, Andy's its own deal, in, uh, Intel's its own deal, but it was going right into NVIDIA shares, down about half a percent. The story out there, jumping to the headline as we kick it off, that the U.S. to tighten the curbs on China's access to advanced chip technology. Now, what they talk about here is that this is aimed to close the loopholes from the curbs that they put in place last October. Remember when they put those in place? Can't believe that was a year ago, man. Uh, they are seeking to strengthen controls on selling graphics cards for artificial intelligence applications, which is why NVIDIA is trading lower, uh, and advanced chip making equipment to Chinese firms. Now, they're going to impose additional checks on Chinese firms attempting to evade. Okay, so there's there's some details to this, right? I'm getting down to the part they would they didn't get. <clears throat> yeah, here we go. So last October when they introduced these, okay, the U.S. did not get the support of key allies, notably the Netherlands and Japan. Not sure why, not sure what was going on. I'm sure it might be in this article right here. Uh, but nonetheless, which allowed chip equipment companies in those countries to continue selling advanced gear to Chinese customers. It doesn't work unless everybody's on board, right? So that helped facilitate China's progress in developing its domestic capabilities. And they talk about how Huawei just introduced a new smartphone in August. And when you tear that phone down, they got a 7 nanometer processor, which I guess is a big deal because that's not very large. Uh, 7 nanometer processor. The achievement cast out on Washington's ability to thwart Beijing's technological ambitions and spurred political pressure for them to impose more sanctions. And I love that they've begun a formal investigation into the phone. Now, doesn't mean you can't hinder what is going on there, and I think that's what's going to become a much bigger issue as you go forward. Uh, well, the phone itself is not a major national security issue. This is a director for the Center for AI and Advanced Technology technologies at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Man, he, check out that title. He's the director of the Wedwani Center for AI and Advanced Technologies at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. That's quite a title. Uh, Gregory Allen. Well, he says the phone's not a national security issue. What the chip inside signals about the state of the Chinese semiconductor industry absolutely is. These advanced chip production capabilities will inevitably be made available to the military if they have not been already. How could you think they have not been already? Um, thus, the breakthrough raises many tough questions about the efficacy of the current U.S. approach. I would say so, right? So they're uh, seeking to address several outstanding issues with the title rules, particularly the development of AI and the shipment of technologies through other countries. Well, I hope so, because AI is going to run everything, man. Uh, and then, then that's a tough one to get out of, right? Okay, I said we were going to get into some earnings companies. Let's break down the numbers in terms of companies. We really kick it off. Look at this market. Can't hold down this market. Look at NVIDIA. Look at NVIDIA, man. Even when they come out with stronger rules, that's going to be tougher for AI chips to making it to China. And NVIDIA's like, ain't no thing, man. I'm trading higher. NVIDIA shares up to 454. Let's check in on Apple. They almost get it all back. Reports are that selling 5% less, less phones in China. And they're going to be worth more today than they were on Friday before that report. We jump over to commodities. Crude right now backing off a bit at 87.19. Gold back about $12. Folks, my dad's got a new gold report out this morning. It's a great time to try it out right in the front page of TFNN. If you haven't tried it out, you get a 30-day money-back guarantee. Uh, gold is rocking, man. New issues on Monday. A lot of the newsletters. Great day to try out any of the newsletters, folks. You come in on a Monday. You try them out. They all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And I tell people, I encourage you, go try them. Cancel them. Get your 30-day money-back guarantee. And it's a beautiful thing. That's what it's there for. You know, Don't keep it unless you like it and you plan on making use of it. And you're going to make use of what you're paying for. Gold off 13 bucks, But boy, 
nothing like the run that we had last week to 1946. Giving back some of those gains, you take a look at gold on a daily. That thing just traded from, what, 1824 up to 1928 for that gold contract. Okay, getting into some of the numbers with the numbers. So, uh, excuse me, some of the companies with their numbers. Now, we talked about Schwab already had their earnings out this morning. They're catching a lift with the market. With the market, though, up by about a percent. Let's see how... Uh, some of the companies that reported last week how they're doing. J.P. Morgan up with the market right now, up by about six tenths percent right now. We have Morgan Stanley last week. No, City. That's right, and Wells Fargo. City up by about percent, and Wells Fargo up by one point five. Can't help myself. Got to keep my eye on yields. Yeah, we're continuing to drop. Higher yields coming at you right now. We got the ten-year at four point seven one right now. Four point seven one. Okay, the numbers. We kick it off. So we got. Schwab today, tomorrow, we get Bank of America with their numbers. Bank of America this morning up by about eight tenths percent. They'll be out with their numbers tomorrow. You jump over to the Analyze tab, okay, and you're looking at about a buck twenty-two in terms of the price for that expected move. Yeah, you take a look. You're talking about a buck forty-two for the week in terms of implied volatility. Twenty-seven dollar stock for Bank of America, and if you're holding options through fi Friday, you're looking at about a buck forty-two. But we're just going to focus on the market maker expected move for the event that's occurring, which is a buck twenty-two. Okay, so they're out with their numbers tomorrow. We got Bank of New York Mellon out with their numbers as well. We get Goldman Sachs though. So you got Bank of America and Goldman Sachs. Now Goldman, you're trading at three eleven right now. You're talking about, I mean, percentage wise. Was that 3% move priced in, in either direction? Implied volatility move of about $11 for Goldman, trading at 311 with their numbers tomorrow. We also get Lockheed Martin. Yeah, they've been making some headlines, of course. Defense contractor jumps from under 400 to 437 on the Middle East. You've pulled back a bit, but their numbers are coming out on Tuesday as well. Lockheed Martin, you're looking at about a $15 move for their numbers. Not a lot of volatility priced into the earnings event when you think about the fact that this thing just went from 400 up to 440. And I imagine that they might be asked some questions in that earnings call about the potential impact on their business, right? Going forward, you also get Johnson & Johnson with their numbers. So, I mean, you look at these companies, right? And we're skipping over a couple, man. J.B. Hunt is out there. Interactive Brokers is out there Tuesday. We're just talking, jumping around. Johnson & Johnson. $6 move priced in for their numbers. You're trading at 157. You jump over to Johnson & Johnson, quite the pullback from 175 down to 155. And maybe that's that's an area of support there at about 155. And you're talking about a $6 move priced for their numbers. All right, folks, stay tuned. We're going to talk about some of the numbers coming out. We got United Airlines up on Tuesday as well. We haven't even gotten into Tesla and Netflix yet. Stay tuned. s and is up by 31 right now. We'll be right back, folks. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Directions Daily S&P 500 Bull and Bear Leveraged ETFs. 
Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. FNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&P up by 24 right now. NASDAQ 100 catches have been on the open, probably helped by NVIDIA trading up right now. NVIDIA up by two-thirds percent. NVIDIA just popped seven, eight dollars right there on the open, man. So much for the curves going into effect. Seems like the market is not too worried for NVIDIA shares. Dow right now up by two-thirds of a percent, up by six-tenths. You kind of see the... Yeah, we're basically back to where we started things off. You got the S&P has just spiked to a high of above 43.90, and we gave up 10 points just like that. So volatility right as you kick off the market action. And we're talking about, so we're going through earnings. We jump to Wednesday, Net, Netflix and Tesla on Wednesday. So there's your main event of the week, man. Netflix and Tesla on Wednesday. You jump over to the Analyze tab. You're talking about a $27 move for a $356 stock. What is that? Excuse me. Yeah, twenty-seven dollar move. Yeah, seven point six percent. That's a seven point six percent move for Netflix shares. That's priced in either direction. You jump over to Tesla. Tesla, you're talking about about a six percent move in either direction. Thirteen dollars and fifty cents. Tesla catches a bit on the open as well, up by about half a percent right now. What else do you get on Wednesday? We get Halliburton with their numbers. Let's jump over to. Them. Why not? Talk about holding up well. COVID lows of $4. You're pushing 42. You're pushing the highs of last year. Let's take a longer term chart. Yeah, I thought that thing. All right, I'm not sure. It's saying October 24th, but I have them up on Wednesday. Nonetheless, we jump forward. You got Las Vegas Sands with their numbers on Wednesday. Just under a 5% move, $44.76. You're looking at about a $2 implied move in either direction for Las Vegas Sands. Let's just put it on a five-year chart for some context. Boy, talk about a pullback from 65 to 45 right now. Kind of in no man's land. Maybe you're testing this high of early 2022, but boy, it looks like you're only on your way to those lows of last year. $35 for Las Vegas Sands. All right, we jump to Thursday. We jump to Thursday. We got AT&T with their numbers. Boy, these phone companies, man, AT&T, Verizon, it looks bad. I mean, look at these charts. And I don't even think Verizon isn't this week. Let's see when Verizon is. Next week? Yeah, Verizon's next week, eight days from right now, next Tuesday. AT&T, with their numbers out on Thursday, I mean, very little volatility. Well, I guess that's that's almost a 5% move, right? You're trading 14 bucks for AT&T. 70-cent move, price in either direction. 
and you come into COVID at 30 bucks, you're trading at 15, you drop to COVID lows of 20 bucks, and this year alone you trade from a high of 22 down to $14 for AT&T shares. Be careful of these equities, man. Something's going on. Verizon shares, you know, it looks bad. It just gets worse, man. This drop off from 50 to 35 $36, you started the year for Verizon at 43 you're going to be down 30% in this equity right now for Verizon shares this year alone. And that's not counting last year. You went from 52 down to 42, I guess, cherry picking those numbers. So be careful. AT&T, Verizon, man. Not sure what's going on. And then you compare it to T-Mobile, right? Maybe that's what's part of what's going on. To some degree, it's it's they're, they're related, to put it lightly. Okay, so we get AT&T shares on Thursday. We get some of the airlines uh, as well. We get American Airlines with their numbers on Thursday. There's a tough chart for you on American. You jump over to the Analyze tab. Decent volatility priced in, $11.80 stock, and you're looking at what? 6.5% move in either direction, 73 pennies for American on their numbers on Thursday. Some of the other companies on Thursday – See, Taiwan Semiconductor, Truist, Union Pacific, Union Pacific, Western Alliance, uh, good old WD40. Let's check out WD40. I love how they're a public company. Everybody knows WD40, right? Boy, that's a tough one. Start the year at 160. Let's see where we are on a Fibonacci basis, man, because that was quite a low back then. Spike up. I was sitting right at the 382. Look at that. So WD40, you're up 1.3% today. You jump over, they have their numbers on Thursday. There's some volatility for you, man. Yeah, look at that. So here's an issue, right, where they don't have weekly options, okay? They only have monthly options, but the monthly options happen to fall this week. Yeah, and this is where you got to be careful, folks. Perfect lesson, okay? We'll do some quick lesson on options. You got a company like WD40, okay? And what are they doing? Watch this. On a daily basis, they're trading 90,000 shares. On Friday, they traded 48,000 shares, okay? If you're ever trading options, watch the next two minutes, okay? You're only trading 48,000 shares on the equity for an entire day's trading, right? You back it up. You did 44,000 shares on October 9th. Some of the low days here. You're doing what? 47,000 shares. Yes, you get up to high days of 240,000. So what happens? You jump over to the option chain on an equity like this, and you have mammoth bid-ask spreads, okay? Let's say you want to buy an in-the-money call that expires Friday for $200, Okay, you're going to have $3.30 of intrinsic value, right, built-in value because you have the right to buy it at 200 Meanwhile, the stock right now is trading it. Well, it's jumping around. But call it 203 I mean, even look at the bid-ass spread on the equity, folks. You have a $2.50 bid-ass spread on the equity, okay? Don't – whenever that's happening, you want to be entering your trade at least in the middle of the market, if not trying to – buy low and sell high as low as you can right the bid is at 201.85 well maybe you put a bid in there at 202 put it 15 pennies higher and become the live bid in there and maybe you get hit right don't buy on the ask at 203.56 and i bring this up because wd40 that's a good company look at this they only have monthly options but the monthly options happen to line up that this is the week that they're coming out with their numbers on thursday they have a decent move priced in for volatility of almost $17 for a $200 stock. But here's the thing. You can try and get into this equity, okay? This is the last part of this. You try and get into this equity, you got a $3 wide bid-ass spread. Percentage-wise, think about it. If the market's really closer to $7 and you get in at 10 you just paid 3 bucks extra on a $7 purchase. 7 14 21 28 You paid like 40% premium. So be careful of that. And if you even get in, folks, guess what? You got to get out. That's the kicker. You got to get out. How do you get out? That's the tough part on an equity that's illiquid. And then you accentuate that and multiply it 
on an exponential basis when you go into the option market. So I would stay away from that option, okay, even though it looks attractive. And there are ways to trade it profitably, I'm sure. But, boy, you're talking about an equity that trades under 50,000 shares a day sometimes. They're out with their numbers Thursday. All right, folks, we got American Express with their numbers on Friday. That's the last one I want to go over. And when we come back, we got a treat. We got a man, Tommy and Landon, are going to be joining the program to say hello. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit of uh, children's, toys, brands, everything. We'll be right back to finish the show. Don't go away. We got our man, Tommy and Landon, coming up. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. All right, say hi. Say hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Not yep, you're going to be able to see it. Welcome back to the show, huh? All right, so I wanted to ask you, Landon, if you if you will, what, what's your favorite uh, what's your favorite company to watch something on, folks? This is Landon, and this is Tommy, and we're saying hello because we're talking markets this morning. There we are. Hi. Yeah, you say hi to everybody. I know. Uh, yeah. No, it doesn't work. That's a little delayed. The feed you're seeing, but you'll see yourself. They're seeing you right now. All right, so Landon, we were talking about Netflix this morning. They have their earnings this week. Do you do you like Netflix or do you like YouTube more? YouTube. YouTube, yeah. YouTube. YouTube. All right, Tommy, what do you like? Do you like Netflix or do you like YouTube? I like YouTube. You like YouTube. You hear this stuff, folks? YouTube gets all the subscribers. Go back to YouTube. 
Can I go back to In the stock market app. That's right. Uh, what do you think? That's here. Hold on, let me back out. That's Google's chart right now, Landon. What do you think of it? That's YouTube. They own YouTube. Yeah. Oh. 139.63. What do you think? 139.63. So there's time going down. Yeah. And up. Okay. And then it's going up and down. Up and down. I know. I don't know. It's uh, it's a strong chart, folks. And I think uh, I think it's it's you're seeing yeah. a reason why. You We're see. streaming Tiger TV on it YouTube. The kids the love YouTube. It went all the way down to yeah. up, down, up, down, up, down, and up, down. So yeah. the stock market's at 88 today. And what else, what else do you like? Do you like dinosaurs? Do you like sharks? What's your favorite toy right now? FNN. What game do you like to play? Tell them. You know. I love uh, Minecraft and Roblox. Minecraft and Roblox, folks. Let's pull up Roblox while we're on the program, Landon. Roblox. No, let's do Minecraft first. You know, I'm not sure. Folks, help me out. Who owns Minecraft? Is Minecraft a public company? No, that's not, not how you that's, spell Roblox. I know that, but that's their stock symbol. See that, folks? Um, that's a tough chart, Landon. Now, you like Minecraft more than Roblox, don't you? Do you? What's your favorite? Your favorite? Mm, both. Both. No, we. Yeah. That's a tough it, shot on Roblox. No, that's not how you spell Roblox. Do the back. I know that. This is their. This oh. is their stock equity, though. Okay. All right. Just like that, we gotta wrap up. We gonna say bye to everybody. Okay. It's the end of the show, folks. Thanks so much for tuning in. Stay tuned. Basil Chapman's coming up next. Say bye. Bye, bye. everybody. Bye. bye. Thanks, folks. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>